As a diehard Marvel fan, this is way overdue. Let's talk about WandaVision. <laughs> GQ, those people entertainment. Before I begin, you guys already know what I'm going to tell you to do. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Follow the Facebook. Follow the Instagram. Follow the Twitter. And of course, go to thosepeople.com for all things those people. Speaking of which, oh, you want to know where I got this hoodie? Go to the merch section of thosepeople.com. So upon the announcement of the show, I thought it looked very strange. However, thus far, Marvel hasn't steered me wrong. They've gained my trust over a period of time and made even some of the seemingly insignificant characters of the Marvel Universe seem pretty cool. So when they announced it, I was like, I don't understand it, but I trust Marvel to go on this journey with you. I've already had the understanding, given my previous Marvel knowledge, that this whole situation is being manipulated by Wanda because she can control the reality around her. I also remembered that Vision is dead, so this has to be some type of simulation or reality warping of some sort. Anyway, diving into the show. Clearly the intro took a lot of inspiration from Dick Van Dyke in I Love Lucy. As a matter of fact, Dick Van Dyke was actually a consultant for this particular episode. Agnes, I don't trust that witch. I think she serves a bigger purpose in this whole scheme. As a matter of fact, I suspect that Agnes is actually Agatha Harkness. Agnes seems to be an abbreviation of the two names, who was basically a witch and served Mephisto. Mephisto is Marvel's version of the devil. More on that later. She even further proves my point by saying things like this. And, uh, charm. Fast forward to the toaster commercial. The toaster was created by Stark Industries. Now, if you've been paying attention, you'll notice that there was a little red light when the toaster was activated. If you paid even more attention and you listened, you'll notice that the sound effect the toaster makes is the exact sound that Tony Stark's technology makes. Now, this could easily be alluding to when Wanda and Pietro had to deal with watching their parents die as a result of Tony Stark's weapons. Now, thus far, the show was pretty happy-go-lucky, pretty fun. And one of the first glimpses that something was wrong was when they were asked, how did they get there? Why don't they have kids at dinner? Why don't you have children? They were both sort of in a trance. They seemed confused. Then, of course, at the end of the episode, camera pans out and you see that that whole episode was watched by a sword agent. There's the sword logo right there. Going in episode two, I was like, okay, I see what they're doing. Um, let's see if this episode kind of addresses some of the questions that I already have as to why everything is in black and white. Why is everything in this sitcom world? As I previously said before, Marvel has gained my trust. So at this point, I'm along for the ride. I just want to see what happens. Another glimpse of something wrong was when Wanda came across that seemingly toy helicopter that was in color. And of course, this helicopter also had the sword logo on it. There was actually one particular scene that was interesting where Wanda talks about maybe she could finally be herself. And Agnes just kind of dismissively laughs it off. Maybe I could just be myself, more or less. Maybe it means something. Hmm. Like I said before, I don't like her. I don't trust her. She is Agatha Harkness, a.k.a. Servant to Mephisto, a.k.a. The Devil. Another thing that I found super unusual about this episode was on multiple occasions, they're mentioning for the children. I love this. It's for the children. For the children. For the children. But throughout the entire damn episode, there were no children to be found. Even at the talent show. Where were the children? What children were they referring to? More on that later. The radio transmission. So it was almost as if Wanda was actually going to snap out of it hearing that transmission until her neighbor cut her hand squeezing glass. 
Then we have the commercial, Strucker Watch with a Hydra logo. Strucker is the name of the individual that was responsible for, I guess, unlocking Wanda and Pietro's powers in Age of Ultron. And then in another strange turn of events, there was a beekeeper that just randomly came out of a manhole in the middle of the street. That could be a nod to the agents of AIM. They're known to wear beekeeper suits. Maybe not this beekeeper suit, but a beekeeper suit nonetheless. Now let's go back to Mephisto. Correct me if I'm wrong, but there was a particular issue where Mephisto kind of used Wanda as a vessel to give birth to children that were actually parts of him to be manifested into reality. So maybe all this for the children for the children was to subliminally get her to give birth to children so that Mephisto can use them as a portal to get into the real world. Going in episode three, I was very much relieved to finally see that we were gonna get some color. No pun intended. I was just sick and tired of the whole black and white thing. I was like, okay, I get it. Let's, let's get on with the story now. I was getting a little impatient. Let's point out some strange things in no particular order for episode three. Now, before I proceed, I do want to point out that in every single episode thus far, in the intro or the outro, there was some type of hexagon that could be a nod to the hex that one division, aka Scarlet Witch, does to create her spells and warp her reality. This episode seems to be taking place in the Brady Bunch house. I recognize that staircase. So, Herb. Herb, for some strange reason, had a saw that is usually designed for cutting through hedges and bushes, and he was cutting through a stone wall, as if he was glitching. Inside the house, there was an exchange between Vision and Wanda about their children's names. I can't wait to meet you, little Billy. I think King Tommy, just a nice classic all-American name. Wanda wanted Tommy, with Vision wanted his child to be named Billy, named after William Shakespeare. Now, in a not so ironic turn, Wanda actually gives birth to twins named Billy and Tommy, and they become the Young Avengers members, Wiccan and Speed. However, that was much later, because when the twins were first born, they were actually manifestations of Mephisto. Ugh. So then Wanda and Vision have this exchange. I think something's wrong here, Wanda. Then, of course, Wanda, not liking how things are going, just up and decides to rewind and do that whole scene over. about another commercial hydra soak self-explanatory this could be a result of suppressed memories of being tortured by hydra agents then there was this strange line so hard to escape <laughs> dropping more hints that something is wrong and there's more than meets the eye in the environment that they are in then of course you got the scene where herb and agnes are talking outside saying that they don't trust geraldine for whatever reason they're talking about how Geraldine doesn't have a home, and it's probably because Geraldine isn't really a real part of what this reality or simulation, whatever it is, is supposed to be. She's the one person that probably doesn't belong. But then Herb almost slips up. Agnes quickly stops him. She came here because we're all... She came here because we're all what? What was he about to say? Guess we'll find out later. Meanwhile, inside the house, she's singing a lullaby for the twins that were born. And then strangely, Wanda's Sokovian accent comes back. I had a brother. His name was Pietro. For just a second. Then Geraldine makes mention of Ultron killing her brother. Now, she probably shouldn't have done that because then Wanda notices the sword logo on her necklace. Jump to a few scenes later and Monica is kicked out of the simulation. Vision asks Geraldine where she is, and she replies, Oh, she left, honey. She had to rush home. But she said it in almost a very cold, eerie way. Then at the end of the episode, it is revealed that she was kicked out of some hologram-looking situation, and there's a whole bunch of agents that come to her aid. Now we are getting to the good stuff. I was most excited 
about watching episode four because of the way episode three ended. It finally clued us in on, okay, this whole sitcom shtick, it, it's not real. And we kind of knew that, but now our, our suspicions were confirmed. But now we get to see what's really going on from a different perspective. And uh, like I said, I trust Marvel. They haven't steered me wrong, so I'm along for the ride. So here's the interesting thing about the blip. Because when the snap happened, everybody saw how terrible it was. Everybody saw how chaotic it was, how traumatic it was. You know, loved ones are disappearing all over the place. When the blip happened, Spider-Man Far From Home kind of showed it in, in kind of a comedic manner. People would just show up in the awkward, most awkward of places. And um, this episode here, there was nothing funny about it. It was straight chaos. The way Monica found out about her mother dying, oof messed me up. So now we start getting a little bit more details on this organization S.W.O.R.D. and how it was built by Maria Rambo, Monica's mom, and how she was supposed to be the leader of the company but now she's not because she was gone for five years and this dude here done took her job. That must have been real awkward. Now they begin to have a conversation about the things that have happened when she was gone. I wonder during this part of the conversation if it was alluding to the Fantastic Four. They coincidentally mentioned that, you know, they used to, they used to have astronauts and they used to explore space and then they just stopped. Now they just started, you know, keeping their eyes on sentient weapons. But what was it that made them change their mind? What happened with the astronauts they used to have? Maybe those astronauts turned out to become Fantastic Four. Maybe those astronauts were bombarded in a cosmic storm and that's why they never went on those missions anymore, giving birth to Marvel's first family. But hey, that's just a theory. Another thing that I enjoyed about this episode is they finally start answering all of the questions we had in the first three episodes. The helicopter, the radio transmission, um, the man in the sewer, in the beekeeper costume. Like all that was finally explained from this perspective. It's because when things entered the atmosphere, when things entered the world, uh, things changed to fit whatever time it was in. So that's why the rope that was attached to the hazmat suit turned into a jump rope and the hazmat suit changed into a beekeeper outfit. The helicopter that was a drone originally turned into a, a toy helicopter. I don't know. It's a whole, it's a whole complicated thing. You know Agnes, a.k.a. Agatha Harkness, from who I think it is. And notice that when they were pulling up all the real names of all the people that were in Westview, under Agnes, they couldn't find a real identity. I think that's on purpose, and I think that's going to be very interesting later. Especially in the comics, because Agatha Harkness was a witch, and then we see a trailer of Agnes in a witch costume. Can't be coincidence. And then of course, the one part that shocked the hell out of me. Where is Geraldine? She had to rush home. What? What is it? What's wrong? This is our home. This part was almost as if they just threw in an extra horror element and they did a really good job on the execution because before they cut to him they show they show Wanda and then he's in the background kind of blurred out so you just assume oh he's just his normal self and then when they cut to him and they see his eyes glazed over and the stone ripped out whew, Marvel is doing an excellent job um, and I do prefer this type of storytelling, this form of storytelling, because with the movie, you have to cram so much information within a two hour, three hour window. Whereas with this Disney plus TV show format, you can explore those extra little subtle things that you otherwise wouldn't have time to explore in the movie. I am super excited on what they're going to show us next. I do theorize though, it's one of two things. Either one, Wanda created an entirely new vision 
inside that little fantasy world that she's created. And S.H.I.E.L.D. has, not S.H.I.E.L.D., S.W.O.R.D. has the real body of Vision. And they're working on bringing him back to life. And they're going to make him infiltrate and try to snap her out of it. Or the real Vision is being controlled by Wanda. Meaning his dead body is being reanimated by Wanda in this dream world. And she kind of snapped out of the trance very briefly and saw the dead version of him because she was starting to lose control, because she was emotional. It it, it could be a lot of things. All I'm saying is I'm very excited as to what's going to come. Hold on to your seats because I know I will. Marvel, keep bringing the heat.